Hey guys, how you doing? It's Brad with atrepodcast.com, all things real estate. I am truly honored and excited for my next guest. We have Sean Sullivan. Now he was licensed in 1994. He started his career with Paramount Properties, now known as Rodeo Realty. And after joining Paramount Properties, he was immediately in that million dollar club in his first year. And then he was recruited by Pinnacle Estate Properties and he became a top producing company-wide 5% in sales production, 5% company-wide in his first year. Sean then left Pinnacle Estate Properties just for a brief time, and he went over to Remax. But after a few years, he really missed Pinnacle, and the owners recruited him back, made him a partner and a managing partner. He currently has over 60 agents that he oversees along with his own business, and Sean is currently the managing partner of the Valencia office. Welcome, Sean. How are you? Brad, I'm doing great, and I'm honored to be on your show today. Very excited. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, and uh, to all my listeners nationwide, uh, Sean and I have been friends for, gosh, well over 20 years, and uh, yeah. he's an amazing, amazing guy, and I'm so happy to have him. Sean, let's kick it off. You know, COVID, it's been crazy. We're now in the, you know, approaching the second half of 2021. Yeah. How did it affect your business and the way you did business in 2020? Well, it was definitely a concern. Um, I remember making calls after announcements were made that um, real estate wasn't uh, considered essential and we saw so many things shutting down. Uh, the phones were ringing, clients were in, in a panic to a degree worrying about home values plummeting and so forth. Uh, but obviously, looking back, we can see that it's been a boom to real estate. It's, yeah, it's amazing. amazing what has actually happened. Um, so, you know, obviously getting acclimated to the federal laws that went into place. We had some changes with CAR in regards to how we would negotiate contracts to make sure provisions were in the deal uh, for the benefit of a buyer and or a seller in the event of COVID. So, you know, we had to get comfortable working in a new environment. And to be honest with you, we had to have a little bit of faith and take one day at a time. Great. Yeah. You know, I know that as an agent, Sean, I had to pivot quite a bit and kind of get used to Zoom and, you know, just the way we we're going to do business and, and really just like you said, have a lot of faith in God and just the world and and really needed to, you know, believe in my company that the, that the company was going to back us. You know, what did you do to pivot? And being a managing partner, how did you help your agents actually, you know, make that transition? Was that in the in the forefront of your mind, how your agents were going to handle this? Well, I give credit to the company. You know, we've always had great leadership at Pinnacle Estate Properties. Uh, our four primary owners are still selling real estate. They have their finger on the pulse. And after over 35 years of experience, uh, they've seen quite a bit. So really the pivoting didn't have to be as drastic as just remembering what the basics are. And the basics are staying in touch with our sphere, our family, uh, making sure we're keeping people educated and informed on market conditions. So of course that became paramount because we, we had to do that in more creative ways. Uh, it wasn't uh, the pop buys as frequently and or door knocking. Uh, some of those things were restricted. So uh, just making sure, again, going back to the basics, getting on the phones, talking with people, uh, using uh, the tools that we have, such as Zoom and uh, other uh, social um, uh, media tools, uh, just made it possible for people to stay connected. Were you real familiar with Zoom before this happened? I wasn't. <laughs> Absolutely not. I thought it was a teeth whitening, uh, by the way. It, yeah, you I, know? I was familiar with Zoom. I, I am very camera shy. I, I run from anything that reflects my image. So <laughs> I, I, I still struggle with the use of it, but I think it's going to be around. I, I don't think that, um, no, it's makes you know, noise. yeah, I, I don't think it's something that's going to go away. And in a lot of cases, cases, I think our clients are happy we have these options yeah. because not everyone feels about this COVID thing the same way. You know, one thing I, I don't know how you feel, but I really like about having Zoom or the, the actual technology of it is, you know, when we're doing offers, especially multiple off offer situations, and oftentimes we're on the other end of a phone call or a text, it's so impersonal. And even with a phone call, you know, sometimes your voice can crack or something can happen and they just, 
they don't hear that confidence. But being able to say, hey, look, can I send you a link? Click on this. You'll be, able, you'll be able to see me. And you can really walk a client through not only paperwork, but other things. And it really helps you be at two places at once. Absolutely. Um, so Sean, one of the things I've always loved about you is, is you're just so personable. I think you're a phenomenal manager. I've talked to many of your agents. They, they just love you. Is there anything that you did when COVID started for your agents? Did you make personal calls to them? Did you send out emails? What did you do to make your clients, or you're not your clients, excuse me, but your agents feel a little bit more comfortable as you, with, as you captain that ship? Well, that's a great question. And again, I'll refer back to our leadership. You know, we put our heads together and we realized that we did have to work differently with our agents. We needed to get on the phones, make sure they're they and their families were okay first and foremost. And then also give them the confidence that, you know, staying in tune to their marketplace and their sphere that they would weather this storm. And so yes, emails were used, uh, phone calls for the agents who were comfortable coming into the office. Uh, it'd be great to see them there. Uh, also being in the office consistently, I think also gave some stability to the, uh, the office and agents knew that we weren't out of business. Yeah. Yes, change of, you know, how things were being handled, but they could always come in and feel that support. That's great. Sean, where do you see real estate headed? You know, that's a great question. I guess if we all knew, or if we really knew the answer to that, we wouldn't be right. selling real estate, right? <laughs> that's right. But I think all the factors are great. You know, I listened to uh, Jerome Powell, chairman of the uh, Reason, Reserve, yeah. and uh, it doesn't sound like he's in a hurry to raise rates. And so I think for the foreseeable future, things are gonna to continue to do well. Uh, we are in an economy that's far from recovered and look at what we're doing. Look at where these numbers are. Yeah, we're very resilient. Sean, do you have any animals? Do you have any dogs by chance? I heard that uh, by chance you might have a very famous dog. Can you tell us a little bit about your dog and the name of your dog and what the dog does? Wow, okay, yes, I have a working line German Shepherd, if you're familiar with that terminology, working. Well, I have a, a hundred pound German Shepherd. Her name is Maya, who I love. Girl, but she's, well, the girl? Girl. Oh my God. I've been looking for a female Shepherd. So we're going to have to talk after the show about it. I her. love her. She's amazing. Yeah. She's well, my boy's name is Piper. It's a non gender name. You know, of course, people, when I say Piper, they think it's a girl, yeah. but non gender name. Uh, Piper is just amazing. He's involved in Mondial Ring Sport. Uh, he's done some shuts and training as well. What's a ring sport? Well, a ring sport is where dogs um, demonstrate their ability to perform in a uh, environment and to do certain tasks. Everything from uh, personal protection to obedience to agility. And most of this work is done off, <coughs> excuse me, off leash. Okay, so, great. Yeah, so the connection between you and your dog has to be very, very strong. I love and, that. Um, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's definitely a lifestyle. It's something that you do uh, to a degree daily. You know, that's his play. I would think. Um, I would you know, think. some dogs playing is getting the ball and throwing it, and that's fine. Yeah. See, I would think, you know, for me, I have a German Shepherd, as I told you, and they're, they, they really stick to one person, like in regards right. to, so Maya, for me, you know, my, my wife and kids get so upset because I play Frisbee with her in the backyard. Uh -huh. So I, I take four at a time. I'll throw one. She'll <laughs> grab it. She'll catch it in midair. She flies through the air, catches it, brings it right back or halfway back, drops it. And I say, Maya, throw another one. She, she puts the other one right on top of it. And she'll do that over and over. And then I'll walk over, grab all four. She'll run to the other side. And I do it to the other side. And we have this thing. So the, it's good and bad because... She'll only do it for me. Mm. And that's the bad. She'll only do it for me because yeah. they, she won't play with anybody but me when it mm -hmm. comes to that. So I don't know where that comes from. Maybe you have more insight to that. You know, it's it seems to be common with shepherd owners. They all have a similar story in that uh, these dogs are known to be a one man, one woman dog. They bond to their pack, of course. But uh, he's truly my best friend. We do um, all activities together. And he was actually uh, used in NCIS a couple of years ago. That's what I wanted to ask you. So that that's amazing. Uh, great show, by the way. I like that show a lot. Um, and do you, do you, are you on set when he's on set? 
No, um, I, it was like a nervous parent, right? You know, I think I would have screwed it up had I been there. <laughs> uh, fortunately, my trainer and his crew, they're dialed in. This is what they do uh, and have done for many, many years. So oh, that's great. Uh, he went down to the set with the crew and I uh, checked on him midday, found out the shoot went great and they were on their way back. So uh, I did not get him for that purpose, but working no. along with uh, the trainer who's very well known and uh, an animal lover. He felt that um, he could use the dog for a particular scene. Uh, that's great. I brought Maya into, um, you know, I do some acting and I was in a show called Doggone Hollywood. And then they called me back and said, hey, you want to be in part two? I said, sure. And they're like, do you have any dogs? And he said, I do. So I brought Maya in with me and did a little funny obedience uh, thing where she wasn't listening to anything I did, which was great, <laughs> great for, you know, the camera. And it was awesome. And she's now two. And this was when she was like two months. Yes, yes. It's a journey. It's a journey with these animals. I mean, they're great. And the the bond grows stronger and stronger. And uh, we'll share stories and yeah, videos. I love it. My phone yeah. is full of videos of him doing wow. exercises and routines. That's amazing. Sean, let me ask you just to, to break away from that for a moment. What do you think has been, you know, what do you think has added to you being such a successful, you know, real estate agent? Um, besides the managing part, I know that you also have a successful real estate business and I know you're very well liked. What do you think has added to that? What do you think is the main, main part? I think that's a very good question. Uh, probably someone else could answer it better than I. But I think it's my attention to the client. I really would like to know what's best for them. I want them to open up so that I can come up with strategies, plans, uh, or plan of action so that their interests are going to be met. Um, and then early on in this business, I realized, in my opinion, you really don't sell houses. Okay, Houses are usually the largest investment anyone will make. And it's very personal. When you walk a family through a home, they see it through an entirely different set of eyes, right? Based on how they live and what their needs and wants are. So when I understood that my job really wasn't to sell homes as much as it was to negotiate terms that would be favorable yep. to my client, uh, the pendulum began to swing in the right direction. People could see that I was very sincere in helping them accomplish their goals. I can see that with you, definitely. And, and you know, one of the other things I think is that's major when it comes to selling homes, I always say anybody can show a home. You're, you know, you could, your dog, Piper, could show a home if you train, train him to. Sure. You know? um, but it is, it's the negotiating. And it's also, it's building that trust and that relationship. So when you build trust with your client, they feel, and they feel they can trust you, that is building a relationship. Yes. And we are all about a relationship building business. Um, well, look what's happening right now, right? When we meet with our sellers and we look at comps, which is the market in the rear yeah. view mirror, right? Right, that's exactly right. You know, and we talk about how their home may compete in a given price range. There has to be some confidence that you're not going to rush the sale and or acceptance of an offer when who knows, 100,000 over the asking price could be the next offer coming in. And it most likely will be when it's priced correctly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know? And that's part of, you know, monitoring and managing our clients' expectations. You know, this, it, it, this could be very reminiscent of 2007 shortly when the short sales were coming in. And it was because we had such a booming market as you were there and I was there in 2005. And 2005, six and seven were just so high and things were, you were, you know, getting $50,000 equity in your house before you closed escrow. And yep. then you'd go to a client and they'd, they'd say, I want one, one. And you go, you know, your house was worth 900 a year ago. <laughs> you know, let's okay. just, let's just think about this for a minute. I can get you a million 50. I want a million one. And then a year later, their house would be in short sale. <laughs> yeah. So we have to be very careful. Sean, what is an average morning for you? Oh, average morning. I like to pick up my messages about 7 a.m. Uh, as you know, we get text, well, emails and yep. text messages and instant messages around the clock. So by picking up messages early, it helps me to shape my day. Um, I like to get into the office between 9 and 9.30. Uh, as you well know, for a real estate office, that's kind of early. Uh, yes. The agents are coming in a little later than that. Uh, but, but yeah, you know, like Sean, I've also learned, I hate to interrupt you, we don't really, 
I used to freak out going, oh my gosh, it's it's nine o'clock. I'm not in the office because I do like to get in early. Now that we were home for a year, I've, I've found that I'm a little bit more calmer. I go, okay, I know I can do this from anywhere. Absolutely. And, and the agents know that they can reach out to us. That's something I love about Pinnacle. Um, I think all of the agents within the company, they have a good working relationship with management and yes. we're there for them, whether we're behind our desks or not, they're at the office. Yeah. But I like to get in around that time, make sure that agents who are in working early have support. And uh, then it's all about managing the day, managing uh, my own business and spending time with agents who you know want to grow their business, which we right. really get excited about and helping them reach the next level. Sean, what do you do for yourself? I mean, do you do in the morning any meditation or any any gym, any working out? I mean, look at you. You're like an Adonis. Come on, talk to me, Sean. Love that lighting, Brad. It's all about the lighting. <laughs> uh, well, I am health conscious, but I have to be honest. Um, a couple months ago, or has it even been that long, I hired a Zoom trainer, okay? Sure. Because with COVID, you're sitting on the couch. You're just not as active. And uh, Asia was great. She got me up you know, working out via Zoom. And so now I just need to kind of get back to my personal routine of getting into the gym three days a week or so. But uh, I could do better, but I'm always mindful of trying to stay healthy. Yeah, it's definitely important. I, I go every day to the gym. I, every Very morning, important. I was there at 6.30. And I, and I feel as I get older, it, it's, you know, for me, I, I work out and then I meditate for about 10 minutes. I say some positive affirmations. I've been looking at myself more in the mirror and trying to... Uh, just really tell myself that I'm great and that I can do it and that I'm proud of myself. And uh, I know it sounds corny, but it really, for me, seems to be helping just in general. I, I feel like we don't hear things, you know, positive affirmations from other people as much as we could and should. So yes. I try to give more compliments to people and I try to compliment myself. More. You know, I'm so glad you brought that up when I was, um, in the Mike Ferry program. Uh, mm -hmm. That was my first exposure to positive affirmations. Right. We had the old CDs and I remember yeah. popping in a CD on my Walkman and being on the treadmill and or taking a jog. Yeah. And it really makes a difference in getting positive thoughts in your mind. Yeah, it's important. And getting out all the negative thoughts. Yeah, very important. Good for you. I'm glad I'm glad you do that. You used to pop in CDs. I used to pop in cassette tape, Sean. <laughs> a dinosaur buddy. We won't hey, talk uh, about three tracks and four tracks. <laughs> there you go, man, right? Sean, did I hear somewhere, you know, I've been checking up on you, and I heard that you are quite the boat guy, that you have a boat over in Marina Del Rey? Yes, I do. Yes. What you kind of boat? investigative work, Brad. Like that? What kind of boat do you have? I have a power cruiser, power boat, and uh, I do enjoy that. It's yeah. um, there in the marina. So Is I that your happy place? Uh, it's my happy place. Piper enjoys the boat as well. Yeah. And uh, it's a community within itself. I've got great neighbors there and it's another opportunity to, um, you know, use my elevator speech from time to time. Yeah, to right. Sphere. How, bi how big is your boat? It's a 30 footer. Oh, great. So is that like, I have a friend who has a Sea Ray 320, I think it's called. Uh -huh. And he's over at Marina, the Marina, Del, Marina Del Rey as well. And I oh, think really? Was, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Jeff and I, Jeff Black and I are pretty much neighbors. We're right. We're docked within just uh, basically a good stone's throw away. Oh, that's good. So if you're upset with him, you will definitely throw a stone <laughs> and go have a glass of scotch with him. Yeah. I know yeah. he's a scotch drinker. That's wonderful. I love my happy place is the ocean. Um, yes. For me, yes. for me, you know, even at night, just to look up and see those stars when you're on the boat or, or, or just in the day that, it's just, it's so, just so peaceful. It's yeah. so peaceful. I've had the dolphins literally swim right into the marina at the back of my boat. You oh, know, sometimes I don't even have to take it out. And, and, and yeah. nature comes to me in that moment. And it's, it's surreal and it's peaceful. It's a wonderful place to be. I'm so glad you're doing that. You know, Sean, what, what advice could you give to an agent, maybe a newer agent or, or an existing agent that maybe just is having some trouble that they could have a, you know, a better 2021. What advice, they're in the first half, we're just finishing the first. What, what can they do to you know, ramp up for, for the second half? I think what's going to be interesting about the second half is that 
a lot of folks that we may think we know what their needs and wants are as it relates to real estate, I think that's going to be changing or it's already changing. I think it may be a mistake to think that you don't need to call this family or that family right. or you don't need to market this particular area or knock on that door thinking that these people are never going to move. What we're experiencing right now, I think so many families are rethinking their options. Yes. And they're huge, right? Yes, very big. I agree yeah. with you, yeah. So I think it's really important that agents stay with you know, a good program of prospecting. Uh, I'm an old timer and I believe you have to commit to prospecting X amount of days a week. Yes, but I agree. It's your, it's your sphere. You've got to be willing to make the call, stay in touch with people. Uh, you're not calling asking when are you going to sell, but keep them informed, make sure they understand. I think the uh, comparable market analysis is one of the greatest tools that we can, you know, use right now. Yeah. because it speaks for itself. And so many times you get that call back. My last few listings were from people who had told me, no, we're never moving. You know, Sean, I'll tell you, it's, it's such a great point. And I try to tell people all the time, if you're, you know, when I'm training agents, I say, look, if you don't know what to say, say hello. How are you? Hey, how'd, how'd you do with COVID? Yeah. I just wanted to say hello. And I'll tell you, I was out in Simi Valley about two months ago. I'm driving around with my client. We can't find anything. It's the first day out. And he's like, Brad, he goes, everything's multiple offers. I just don't know what to do. And I said, you know, I'm going to call one of my clients. He just lives around the corner. I sold him the house like a year ago. But let's just see how he's doing. And I literally did this with my client on the, on the, on the phone. And I said, hey, man, how you doing? He goes, good. I go, you know, I'm out and see me. We're looking for a place. I go, I know I just sold it to you a year ago, but do you know any of your neighbors maybe want to sell it? He goes, actually, right. he goes, I just want you to know I was going to call you. I just got the okay that I can work from anywhere. So I'm thinking about listing my house. Yeah. I go, can I bring my client by right now? He goes, sure, no problem. Come on by. Went by, never put it on the market, double ended it mm -hmm. and boom. So another way to kind of get some businesses, just call everybody. Great story. That's the point. I mean, you know, people are making life changing decisions and the market is allowing people to yeah. do things that they thought possibly they would not be able to do. So uh, I think for new agents, for old agents, any agent, you have to understand that and make sure you're staying in touch with uh, your sphere. Sean, if you were Marty from Back to the Future and old Sean jumped in that DeLorean I wanted to give young Sean some advice. What kind of advice would you give young Sean? Well, I think the advice would be never underestimate the power of meeting people. Yeah. You know, we meet people throughout our lives and sometimes we just don't really understand what a benefit it is to establish a connection with people. Right. And as you know, we've been in this business for quite a while together and, um, to enjoy working this business, I think has a lot to do with who you choose to work with. And yeah, that's big. That's yeah, big. yeah. And with inventory being so tight now, and you know, we used to have X amount of homes selling in a farm annually, and that's not happening anymore. The larger or the bigger your sphere is, and the better relationships you have within people within or with the people within your sphere, yeah. I think the better you'll do in this business, and the more you'll enjoy it. So just really recognizing the benefits of meeting people and staying in touch and um, getting to know them, getting to know uh, more about the people that you meet. Building those relationships. Absolutely. Sean, who's been your biggest influence in real estate? Wow, that's a big question. Um, I, I, one name comes to mind and that would be um, David Friedman. Oh, I know David. David Friedman uh, is a guy that um, He's at Rodeo, right? Or he's was? A, he's at Rodeo. I met David many, many moons ago, and he is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And he's very, very humble. You know, David is- Lives true. on the beach in Malibu, right? Yeah. Uh, David has done a tremendous amount of business. He's a good guy. And, you know, he'll sit down and talk to you just like we're talking, and he'll give you good advice, and he'll steer you in the right direction. And I think he got into the business as a teenager. The yeah. story you shared with me. 
and it's been a wonderful ride for David. So, you know, people like David, but I'll be honest with you, within our ranks here at Pinnacle Estate Properties, we have some fantastic agents who have consistently year after year demonstrated their professionalism, their commitment to the business, and not just that, their ability to, here's that word, to pivot yeah, and to make great. changes where they need to be made. So. Uh, the list is long, but David is definitely one that would be at the top of my list. Well, that's wonderful. I hope he's listening and, and he hears that. Uh, Sean, talk to me about golfing, buddy. I hear you uh, love to play golf. Now, I saw you over at Sandpaper once or twice, but I hear it's in your blood that it's just something that you really, really enjoy. You know, I do enjoy golf, and I've learned to uh, kind of use it as a metaphor to life. Yes. Uh, real estate. <laughs> You know, uh, you play, I don't know, seven, eight holes and you're struggling and you just can't seem to get a rhythm. And after the eighth hole, maybe they start going in for you. Yeah. Yeah. You I know? Understand. So I look at golf as a metaphor as in, you know, life. You can have a good front nine and a bad back nine or the reverse. Yeah. But at the end of the round and when you're sitting down at the 19th hole, you can look back and realize that um, you had a great round, all things considered. So what's, I think what's your handicap. Oh, What's your handicap? Well, my handicap, I'm not so proud of, but I'm still, it's work in progress. Hey, I'm Sean, about, I'm like a 30, buddy. So I'm about sense. a 17. You know, uh, we could play then. Um, yeah, about a 17 uh, on a good day. I'm a member of my club over in Woodland Hills, and, and I, I enjoy it. But I don't really play with a lot of people because I'm really not that good. But I'll tell you, I'll go out. I can go alone, and I can hang out. And I, I have a great time just being out there and exactly what you said. I'll have a couple bad shots and it's like real estate. I always say you're one deal away from being in a good mood, right? Exactly. You get that one shot and you just hear it and you go, yes, that felt yes. so good. I'm coming yes. back. I'll be back. Yes. And look, great relationships are made on golf yeah. courses. Uh, again, it's another opportunity to meet great people and to get your brand out there a little further. That's right. Sean, did you just expand your Valencia office? I know it was a smaller office. Um, did, did, did you expand it? Yeah, we did. I'm really excited about that. We've um, expanded across the street. Okay. Uh, next, so next to the hotel or? Right across. Okay. We're right across from the Hyatt there, which is directly across from uh, my office. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we put in, uh, I think it's five uh, private offices wow. for top producing agents. And uh, it's beautiful. That's uh, great. great location, great signage. So we're really excited uh, to get that open very soon. Well, it's well well deserved. You are a stellar guy, and, I, and I, I'm really happy to see that the owners uh, have stepped up and are expanding. You know, because they believe in you and what you've done, and you have great agents. So uh, I, I noticed that at the holiday parties, one of the things I love is when I see you or I see uh, your agents. You guys seem to travel in packs. Mm. seem to go places together and to really like one another. And I would say that that starts with you. Mm. So, Well, I appreciate that observation. We really are a family here in Valencia. As you know, the culture of uh, Pinnacle State Properties is just that. I mean, we're all a big family and I think that's what separates us from our uh, competitors. Uh, but people truly are friends at the office. Um, they all support one another. And again, that's back to the culture of Pinnacle. We all share. We don't um, uh, try to keep anything away from any other agent that could help them with their business. And there's room for everybody. There's room for everybody at the top. Sean, what are you most proud of, both personally and professionally? Well, uh, personally, obviously family. I'm very proud of my daughter, which uh, you know. And How, uh, how old is it's Jasmine? How oh old is she God, now? 32. No. <laughs> so I remember her when she was like eight. I know you do. I mean, and, my and God. she asks about you from time to time. Absolutely. She's a, she remembers she you. is such a bright, beautiful girl. Is she married now? She's married and oh. uh, she and her husband are doing great. They just celebrated five years on the 10th of May. Congratulations. Wow. So I'm very proud of her and the young woman that she's grown up to be. And I uh, couldn't have uh, chosen a better son-in-law. He's just you know, he's not even a son-in-law. He's my son now. He's, he's oh, great. that's wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. Yes, yes. Very, very proud of uh, the two of them. And, you know, when it comes to business, I'm just so thankful that I've been able to help, you know, so many families 
And as you know, the longer we do this, it's not about the awards. It's not about the trophies. I mean, obviously we want to re- continue to be consistent with production, but every deal matters because you're helping people who truly need guidance and your expertise. And when you can bring the experience to the table to their benefit, yeah. uh, it's a great feeling at the end of the day. It is, it is. Sean, what do you, what, what would you like agents who are thinking of coming to your Valencia office or to Pinnacle uh, in general, but I, I think especially your Valencia office, what do you want them to know about you and the culture that you're bringing into the Valencia office? You know, I always uh, kind of joke on our recruiting appointments when I'm with Carl and or Danny. Yeah. Uh, I always say, hey, these two guys have never worked for another company. They're homegrown. Right. And it's as true. you mentioned, I've worked for Rodeo, which is a great firm. Remax, yeah. I've worked for Remax, another great firm. But I can honestly tell people from my experience that Pinnacle is a very, very special place. And it's special because of the leadership. And uh, Dana and uh, Carl and Jeff and Danny, they are so sincere in wanting to see our agents accomplish their their individual goals. And not just accomplish those goals, but also keep family first. Yeah, that's true. That's great. Yeah. So the culture really is to spend as much time as we can uh, with our agents, helping them to refine their business and to work a little smarter, not harder. That's right. You know, again, to work out personal uh, plans of action so that they can accomplish their goal. In my opinion, you can hang your license anywhere. Um, but Pinnacle Estate Properties and the location we have here in Valencia, it's where you want to build a career. So Pinnacle would be the family you choose. Absolutely. That's great. Sean, for the people listening that are interested in maybe using you to buy or sell a home, or maybe they'd like to come to Valencia uh, and work for you, what's the best way to reach you? Well, you can always Google Sean Sullivan. Yeah. Sullivan Group at gmail.com is my uh, email address. Can you spell Can you spell it? Sure. It's uh, S-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N group, G-R-O-U-P. I think I said that right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's at you can g- reach out to me. You can call any of our locations. As you know, we're one company. Um, I'm throughout the LA County area helping clients. And I'm happy to meet with agents that are looking to make a make a move. It's great. And, and I can tell you all that Sean really is what, what you see is what you get with him. He's a phenomenal, actually, that's not true. You probably get a lot more because he's a phenomenal guy. Um, really admire and trust him. And he is there anytime I've ever needed him, you know, in the past, you've always, you know, I, you pick up the phone and you, hey, what can I do to help? What's going on? And, you know, listen, I, I oftentimes will just stop by to say hi if I'm out there showing property. I'm taking a listing out there right now, so you'll start to see me a little more. But Great. Um, but, guys, call Sean. He's phenomenal at what he does. You would be so blessed to work for him. And if you'd like to buy or sell with Sean, give him a call. Give him an email. And remember, go to my website at atrepodcast.com and sign up for my five free secrets on how to be successful in real estate today. If you'd like to find out about my coaching program, you can sign up for a free 30-minute coaching session. Remember, I want to see you thrive, not survive. And remember what my dad always said, have an attitude of gratitude. Hmm. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Brad. And that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, many of my podcast listeners have become my coaching clients. If you'd like to be a coaching client, go to my website at www.atrepodcast.com and sign up for your free 30-minute coaching evaluation at www.atrepodcast.com. And as my dad would always say, have an attitude of gratitude.